I'm Alistair Greener. I'm Gemma Clark. And, and this, this is, is The Swindon, Swindon Show. Hello and welcome to a really wild Swindon show. This week coming to you from the Cotswold Country Park and Gardens. Now this vast 160 acre park is the brainchild of one man, John Hayworth, who in 1969 transformed the wilderness of the Bradwell Grove Estate to create the Wildlife Park. Now it's now been visited by over 12 million people since the park opened in March 1970. Now the park is home to 1,279 different animals and that's actually 272 different species and they all have to be accounted for, every single one of them. But more about that later, here's what's on the show this week. We meet TV vet Joe Ingalls to discover more about his new state-of-the-art practice. We bring you the latest events in our What's On guide. We dig deep in our inbox and read out your messages. We aim to get your taste buds going with the welcome return of food stylist Leslie Holdship. Perfectly followed by the local eating out guide. Gemma becomes a keeper for the day and feeds the penguins. We give you the chance to win in our many competitions. And to end the show, we bring you all the fun of the fair with Gifford Circus. Now I'm joined with Debbie Ryan and it's two familiar faces to the park. They've been here for a couple of years That's now. Right. We're here at the Giraffe House. How have these guys come along? Well, it's a, an animal we've wanted in the collection for quite some time, so we're delighted. We've got a male group, so we're delighted that we've got them finally at the park. And as you can see, you can get very close to them here with the Giraffe Walkway. Yeah, brilliant. And um, obviously you're open for summer now. We've got a lot of schools coming because it's the end of term, despite the typical English weather. You, I've heard there's about 800 school kids here today alone. Yeah, I mean, Despite the t being like tropical, the tropics here, isn't it, with the downpours? But yeah, it's finally a little bit of sun has come out, and it's every time to come to the park as well because we've got a, new, a lot of baby animals as well. So we've got meerkats, prairie dogs, and we've just found out we've got um, pandas, red pandas, brilliant cubs, which is really good news. Excellent, and you also have give people the opportunity to get even closer to the animals and feed them, known as um, be a keeper for a day. Can That's you right. tell us a bit about that? Yeah, sure. If you love animals and you're kind of animal mad, it's a really great thing to do. You should shadow a keeper, you get to see how they get fed, you can help feed them as well and basically follow the keeper on their on their routine so it's Which a really lovely way to see the animals. I'm getting to do later a bit Wonderful. with the penguins so that should be an experience feeding them their fish and everything Brilliant. like that. Um, and I know that you're going to open on just two days a week for the wild nights. That's right, we're going to open the park after dark which is on Saturday the 4th and Saturday the 11th of August which is a lovely time to see the park and you get to follow the keepers around and they'll do some nighttime feedings as well with animals like the giraffe and the penguins so you get a VIP tour of the park and a chance to get to see what goes on kind of after hours absolutely when the doors shut <laughs> brilliant well I think we've got one coming over now actually see if he's wonderful he's gonna have a feed yeah there we go so this is just literally one of the experiences that people can have when they come here that's right Surprisingly tough on the <laughs> Turn it around, shall I? There we go. Well, if you love animals as much as we clearly do here, then you'll know how much it can sometimes cost if people have pets. Now, we've just heard about a new veterinary practice that's open in Swindon, and they're dramatically lowering the prices of treatments. You may have also seen the creator of this practice on your television, so let's hear more about him. Now this does look just like an industrial unit in West Swindon, which is exactly what it is. But on the other side of the door is a groundbreaking new idea for a veterinary practice. And I'm going to meet the man behind it, who you might just remember from a certain animal-based TV programme a few years ago. Hi Joe. Hi Alistair. Good to see you. Yeah, so you. Uh, this in the middle of August will be a veterinary practice with a difference <laughs> in Swindon. It absolutely <laughs> will. I mean, I know it's a bit hard to believe at the moment, but this really is, I hope, going to be the future of um, the veterinary practice world. And what we're trying to do here is 
to try and demystify what goes on in a vet practice because I think in, in too many practices everything's kind of hidden away behind closed doors you, know, you leave your pet there um, and they sort of disappear off behind and you don't really know what happens to them so the idea here is that this is going to be a great big glass wall across here so right round here three and a half meters high big glass wall and behind there the vets and the nurses are going to be doing their stuff. I mean, not doing... The difference is you'll be able to see it. Exactly. So you'll be yep. sat in this waiting area. So around here, there'll be seats here, waiting area there. So you'll be surrounding this central preparation room area and you'll be able to see what we're doing. So, you know, the idea is that we're kind of proud of what we're doing. We're looking after your pets well and we want you to see us in action. So although there's not going to be actual surgery because... You know, we guess that people might be a bit squeamish about that. There's going to be minor <laughs> procedures like um, dental procedures, um, getting ready to anaesthetise animals, um, taking blood samples, just so people can get a flavour of what really goes on behind the scenes. And it's very much 21st century, because I see you've got ah. your iPad there, which I understand is an integral part of the practice. It is, yes. Um, you know, I've had this, this dream about this practice of the future for a long time, and, and only now really has technology allowed me to do all the things I want to do. And, and really, the iPad is one of those, because instead of being stuck behind a normal computer, all of the clinical staff here are going to have iPads. So when you come in with your dog, I've got all your details on my iPad, and then I can use the camera on here to take a picture of your dog or a video of your dog. I upload that onto your record, so we've got more than just text, we've got video and photos as well. And then you can go home and you can log on into your vet's clinic records and see your dog or your cat's medical records, which no one has ever done before, no one in the Because whole that world. is the big difference, isn't it? The fact that the, your customers are going to be very involved in terms of seeing what's happening because they're going to log on, so literally they will know everything that's happening. Yeah, we don't want to hide anything, you know, from anaesthetic records to pictures of the operation to, um, you know, to regular updates through the day um, onto your medical records. You know, the customers will be able to see everything that's going on here, and I think that's really important. And the other way that people will be able to use the web in a really unique way here um, is through booking appointments online. So right. we'll have this on intelligent online booking system where, um, just like you do with booking a flight or booking a hotel, the price varies depending on how busy you are. So you can get some really good bargains and it helps us keep our workflow nice and steady. Now you've got a whole myriad of rooms behind here as well, don't yeah. you? So a lot of things going on. What exactly will you be doing? Yeah, I mean this is kind of the, 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 the front, you know, the, um, the showcase bit of the practice. At the back there, um, we've got all the normal um, rooms you'd expect in a veterinary practice. So there are dog kennels, cat kennels, there's two operating theatres, there's an x-ray room, um, dispensary, all those kind of rooms, consulting rooms as well. And we've split those up, so we've got dog consulting rooms over there and a cat room over here because you know, cats and dogs don't like to um, be waiting <laughs> in the same area. So it's, I guess, behind those scenes physically, it's quite a traditional practice. This is obviously very untraditional and very different, and, and what we're doing online is also really cutting edge and really different. And what a great thing for Swindon to have. Well, I think so. I mean, Swindon's got this reputation as being cutting edge. You know, there's quite a lot of technology goes on in Swindon, and mm -hmm. I think it's fantastic that Swindon can be the home of what I hope is the start of a veterinary revolution. So, and I think what better place to do it? Well, I look forward to coming back in, uh, what, just a month's time and seeing see it all yeah. in action. Well, hopefully, in just <laughs> over a month's time, this is going to be a hive of activity. We're going to be doing some filming from there. We're going to do these live broadcasts as another part of what we're doing from in there. And this place will be teeming with Swindon's pets that um, hopefully we're looking after very well. And the great thing is we can all watch it on TV. <laughs> exactly, you certainly can. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks very much. Pleasure. Good Thank you. you. From Wednesday through to Saturday, you and the kids can learn all about the terrible Tudors and the vile Victorians at the Wyvern Theatre. Horrible Histories Live uses actors and groundbreaking 3D special effects to bring these distant times to life, from Henry VIII's headless wives to the misery of the Victorian mines. If you enjoy a spot of golf and you want to help a local charity, then the Prospect Hospice Golf Day this Friday is where you need to be. Held at Marlborough Golf Club, the day includes bacon rolls and arrival, 18 holes of golf, competitions throughout the day and an evening meal and auction with a chance to win some great prizes. See website for details. It's been growing steadily since its conception and the 6th Summer Breeze Festival is set to be bigger and better than ever this Saturday and Sunday, just outside Swindon. Over the two days, 50 top quality acts will play across three stages with headliners including Katie Tunstall and Vintage Trouble. And don't forget, there's still a chance to win tickets to this event. Just watch our competition guide for more details. And we can't forget what can only be described as the biggest event in Swindon this year, the Big Arts Day on Saturday. 
Local star Josh Coomer is headlining alongside Swindon rapper AJ Live with hundreds of other acts, shows and activities on offer throughout the day, all set in the picturesque ground of Lydiard Park. See website for details. On a Saturday, you can also enjoy the sounds of two greatest rock bands in history, Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin. Purple Zeppelin are four highly talented musicians dedicated to replicating the music of their namesakes, and their show at the Vic even includes costume changes. At the time of recording, tickets were available for all these events. However, we do recommend you contact the venues before attending. This is the Tropical House, which houses a whole range of birds and animals. The perfect place for us to delve into our inbox for this week and read your messages. Yes, and we start off with a, an email from Frankie in Orlando. See, we've got international audiences. We do, Marvelous. great. Anyway, Frankie writes, It's wonderful and a joy to watch every week. The Swindon Show, an interesting and informative magazine-type format that entertains and informs without all that over-the-top commercial jazz. It's a breath of fresh air in these hectic times. Great teamwork. Thanks so much. I couldn't put it better, better myself. What a lovely <laughs> comment. Thanks for that. Um, I've got a Facebook message from Audrey Wilcox, and she says, says, hi, really impressed with your show, having once lived in Swindon. Looking forward to the next one. Uh, well, that's another nice one. And we've got another one from abroad. Dear Alistair and Gemma, how great that your last show was at the Abbey Stadium. Back in 2008, my wife, daughter and I came to England to see as many Speedway events in the three weeks as we could possibly fit in. We stayed at Swindon's old town in Hunt Street, as Swindon has so much history in Speedway, as dated from 1949 in your show. We went from Poole up to Manchester and everywhere in between and over to Cardiff for the British GP Speedway event. Apart from that, how beautiful England is and all that history and the flowers in the towns and villages, three weeks away wasn't enough. Maybe we hope to be back again sometime soon. She didn't actually mention all the rain that we have as well, but <laughs> never mind. <laughs> anyway, that's from Mick McKenzie via YouTube. Ah, well thought out message there, that's nice. Lastly, we've got an email from Sharon Turner from Penhill, and she says, Hi guys, love your show and our family watch it every week. We would like to know why the show is not broadcast on local TV instead of just the internet. Well, that's a great question, and in fact, to be the honest with you, ask. it's a very difficult uh, one to answer straightforwardly. It's just a rather complicated process. So for the meantime, you can watch us on YouTube and also on the web. And if you've got one of those modern, smart um, internet televisions, which came out about a year or so ago, you can also watch us on that. Um, but we'll keep you posted. Watch this space. Yep, so that's it for this week's Inbox. Don't forget to email us or Facebook us or Twitter if you want to get in touch, and we'll try our very best to read out your messages. So coming up, you're going to be feeding the penguins. I am. Uh, we're also excited. going to be talking to Gifford Circus, but in the meantime, I'm off to go and get something to eat. Okay. Now it's time for the Swindon Show's very own TV chef, Leslie Holship. Great to see you again, Leslie. Hello. Uh, the first time we met, we had yakiniku, Japanese barbecue. Yes, then we had a traditional British dish mm -hmm. of a chicken in Arkles ale and spring vegetables. What have we got today? We have got a French dish, but it's got sort of an English twist, I suppose, to it. Right. Because we've got some lovely English seasonal berries that we're going to be using. And it's basically eggy bread. Oh, I like that. But we're going to be making it with brioche, which is a French enriched bread, which is delicious. And so, let me guess, the French have got a far more smart term for it. They do. It's called pan perdu. Pan perdu, so, that's lost, isn't it? Yes, it is. I don't actually ah, understand you why. They're yes, very there impressed, Alistair. Very good. <laughs> I looked it up beforehand. Oh, anyway, did you? <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what we're going to do. Okay, so first of all, and you're going to help me out today, aren't Good. you? Good, right, I'll put that down. Brilliant. First of all, we're going to whisk some egg because we want to um, dip the, the bread in. So just making like a classic eggy bread that you would if you were having right. breakfast. Right, okay. So if you'd like to break those two freshly eggs. freshly laid from the peacocks are, this morning. Oh yeah, absolutely from the peacocks, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we're going to whisk those up and then we've got some lovely chocolate uh, brioche, which I've pre-sliced. In fact, I wouldn't normally use chocolate, but actually I thought that would just give it a little touch more luxury, Extra actually. richness. Well, yes. we are in these beautiful surroundings. We need the full essence of... We do. ...elegance and glamour yes. and sophistication, don't we? So, would you like to give those a little whisk little with whisk. a fork? Would be great. Right. So you can keep on whisking. Make sure it's nice and, nice and sm as smooth as you can. As smooth as yes. I can. Right, OK. So we're going to put in a nice piece of butter there, like that. There we are, and get that melting. 
in the pan. Lovely. And then we can get some of this bread soaked in there. So we're just going to just sit that in. We don't want to, would you want to turn that over or would you like right. me to do no, that? Right, no, that's fine. I can, uh, okay, just sort of turn that's it about over the limit the of my skills. Oh, it's very good skill. Like, do, do you like that? You need that Could skill. I win an award for that? You could, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> would you like to very carefully lay that in? That's I'm not sure it. if I do carefully. Oh, I'm sure you can do carefully. Right. Is and that one a bit soft? Is that okay? No, that's fine. Lovely, look at that. Great. Lovely. Okay. And what's really nice in that is that we have the chocolate in the bread. Right. And so the chocolate is lovely and, and going to be lovely that. and melting. It does look Beautiful. absolutely delicious. Okay. So what we need to do now is we just need to get a little bit of sugar ready, which we're going to dust the bread with. And right. I've just got some golden caster sugar here. And I'm going to just put in a few vanilla seeds. We've got these lovely little seeds inside which you might see if you buy a really good vanilla ice cream, you'll probably see those little seeds in there. Right, so now I've got the seeds all mixed through the sugar, we can take the bread out of the pan if you want to just okay. drain it on the paper there. Right. And then that would just take away any of the excess um, you know what? butter. It already smells lovely. Yes, it smells beautiful, doesn't it? What we need to do is we need to just sprinkle some of this lovely vanilla sugar over the bread. So if you'd like to sprinkle some, just use right. your fingers, sprinkle it over and then turn them over and do both sides. Whilst you're doing that, we're going to get the pan hot just to saute the fruit. So, would you like to just help me take off some of the little stalks off of the strawberries? Right. You can use that knife. It's only had the vanilla on it anyway. Right. So, okay. and we just take, do we so just, just slice straight across the, the top? top off, yes. Okay. And then you can slice that in half and pop right. that into the pan. Okay. So I'm going to just put in. We've got raspberries and blueberries as well, but I'm going to put the blueberries in first. Right. It's really because they're going to take a little bit longer in the pan only a moment longer but raspberries are obviously very soft and we don't want to over so we just those. want to get them soft then we do, we? do yes we're right. not we're not looking to totally cook these so we just want to just give them a little bit of color in the pan a little bit of flavor with the butter right and then we've just got a little bit of french brandy which we're going to put ah. into there is that so, right th no th it's fine by me <laughs> i can just see where this is going to go if we're not careful <laughs> So when you're flambéing anything, you need to keep the pan really hot. Right. So, have you ever flambéed anything? I, I've tried, um, but the fire service managed to deal with it fairly quickly. <laughs> flambéing <laughs> is ultra easy if you've got gas. Right. It's much easier if you have gas. It's not so easy if you've got electric because you need a match to do that. When you have gas, you can literally put the alcohol in, as you'll see, and yeah. then you draw the pan back and it should ignite should be the operative word. At this but point, I'm going to leave it to the professionals. <laughs> Are you sure we wouldn't like to do it? Okay, should I try it? Okay. Well, then. Right. So, so, when, would you like, are you going to pour the brandy in? Okay. How much do I put in? Oh, just put in a nice glug. <laughs> I, I, I like the way the whole crew suddenly decides to watch at this point. Right, okay. Okay, go on a nice glug of that into About there. That. Yes, and then pull the pan back. There we Oi. are. And then we can leave it on the, on the heat. That's it. I'm keeping that well away because I can see that's all going up as well. Oh, look at that. Oh, I lovely. can't imagine that you can really see the flames well, but you can probably hear them when, when Alistair put the, the brandy in there. And that's then that's lovely. going to give us a lovely sauce on there to pour and the over. The butter our... sort of thickens it slightly. It as will well, do, it? yes, yeah. that's right. So, all we need to do now is just spoon that over the bread. I mean, actually, probably two pieces would probably be enough for a portion, but um, I that's think that's lovely, the sauce and everything there, isn't it? So, just I, I can, can you hear the salivating? Yes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> And what would be Look nice, but as Beautiful. it's so hot, I decided not to, but uh, what would be really nice would be a big blob of ice cream. <laughs> but there we are, there's our beautiful well, I've heard about their ice bread. creams here, so... Uh, yes, yes, their ice cream is very later. good here. Fantastic. So there we have it. Right, I've got to taste it. Now, while I do this, because I know what happens, I yes. start talking and then I can't talk and eat at the same time. So That's maybe give us a quick... <laughs> <laughs> Despite what everybody yes. else says yes. around here. So just give us a quick idea. What are the other things you're up to? Because you've got your food styling, uh, you've got your blog each, you know, frequently and lots of other things going on. Yes, and um, I'm doing lots of work for Borough Market still at the moment, who is mm. the big um, food market in London. And I sort of do recipes, write recipes for them and, and uh, do cookery demonstrations and things. But hot news, I'm probably going to be opening a delicatessen in Are Farringdon. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I suppose I'm going to have to let Gemma try some. Really, I think you I? ought to. I think it would be rude it's, not it's to. It's I'll have one more bit first. I can but if, smell it. if mm. you want the recipe, that you can go and have a look on my website. Look, you and must I'll put try. It on the blog there. Excuse um, using the same fork. I don't mind. Isn't that it's delicious? Please try some of the bread, yes. We share everything here mm. on the Swindon Show. Well, that is gorgeous, really, really nice. I hope Leslie's tantalised your taste buds. 
from us here, but now it's time for you to have a look at what's going on at this week's Eating Out Guide. One of Swindon's hidden gems for eating out has to be the Weybridge Brew House near West Swindon. All the dishes on their light lunch menu are just £10, perfect for a quick and tasty lunch, all set in their comfortable modern dining area. Just eight miles outside Swindon lies the Royal Oak at Bishopston, a pub which is already well known for its top-notch food. They've just announced the arrival of their new chef, Ricky McCohen, who will be bringing all of his experience, flair and talent to the plates of the Royal Oaks diners. Pizza Express have got a great deal to keep your stomach satisfied after a manic Monday or troublesome Tuesday. If you visit their restaurant in Old Town on either of those days, you can enjoy two classic or Laguerre pizzas for just £12. Visit their website to claim this offer. Don't forget you can check out all the best places to eat around Swindon in our comprehensive guide. Just visit swindonweb.com. These guys are so cute, I wish I could take them home with me, but uh, unfortunately they won't let me for some reason. Anyway, uh, there's no sport this week, unfortunately, because Peter's decided to go on holiday. So we thought, what should we do instead? I know what, we'll send Gemma down to feed the penguins. Simples! Yes, Alistair, that's right. I'm down here with the penguin enclosure with Chris Green, who is the bird keeper at the Wildlife Park. So, Chris, tell us a little bit about the species of penguin you've got here. Um, we currently have 21 Humboldt penguins, which these guys are, and these guys are found in South America, particularly the area around Chile and Peru. Um, and they're one of the world's rarest species of penguin, um, and there's only between 3,000 and 10,000 breeding pairs of Humboldt penguins left in the wild, um, which is why we only keep this species here at the Wildlife Park. And how many do you have lurking around the pools and um, behind the scenes? We currently have 10 pairs of penguins, and we've got one young male um, who's not paired up. So we've got 10 pairs here, which all have the ability to breed, but some of them um, haven't bred for a little while. Um, All right, but you park. might be expecting some, some new penguins soon. Very soon, hopefully. We've currently got three eggs in our incubation room, which is just um, to my right, and we've got one penguin egg in a nest over on the left-hand side at the moment. And so. how long will that take to, to, for the new penguins to arrive? Um, Humboldt penguins take between 38 and 42 days to hatch. So, oh, right. um, I believe they're due on the 18th to the 26th of July. Lovely, that would be so a nice surprise for the park. Hopefully very soon we shall have some more chicks. And you're feeding them now. What yep. kind of things are you feeding these, these them are, there? Our penguins are fed on sprats here at the Wildlife Park, but they would eat um, a more varied diet in the wild. Um, but we don't give them their natural diet because the overfishing of their main food supply in the wild Wild is one of the major problems facing their numbers. Right, okay. So we give them sprats here at the park, which as you can see, the penguins seem quite to like. enjoy it. And I understand that um, you can take part in this if you are a visitor, you can feed them yourselves as part of the keeper for a day. Is yeah, right? we have um, two experiences available. We have keeper for the day, which um, include the penguins for half an hour in the morning, um, and we do a penguin feed just on its own, um, which normally takes place in the afternoons most days. Lovely. So everyone can take part if they wish. If they wish to. to get involved with the penguins. Definitely. But I think it's a little bit stinky for me. Very, so very stinky. Let, let, thank you very much. <laughs> You're We're going to check out some competitions now. Four weekend camping tickets to Summer Breeze Festival, featuring the likes of Katie Tunstall and other top acts. Four tickets to see Modern Romance and support at the Old Town Bowl. Four tickets to see Bjorn again at the Old Town Bowl and a sit-down meal for two at the Burj Indian restaurant in Wanborough. All you have to do to enter is visit the page on the screen now. If you have a smartphone, you can scan the barcode to be taken straight there. Winners will be contacted by phone and email. For full terms and conditions, please see the competitions page. Well, there's so much to do here at Cotswold Wildlife Park and Gardens. You really need to set a whole day aside. Unfortunately, due to our limited <laughs> schedule, um, we don't have time to show you it all here today. But as you can see, I'm joined by some very special guests. Uh, they are from Gifford Circus. I believe this is Kez. Mark. Yes, that's Kez. <laughs> yes. And this is Tweedy. Hello. And behind we've got uh, Bichu and Bibi. And uh, they're all part of Gifford Circus, that's which correct. actually is quite interesting because it's a relatively new circus. Yes. Only formed in 2000 
but you like to go back to the traditional old values of uh, circus of the circus That's trade. Correct. Yes, we're we're a village green circus. We we don't play big cities particularly. We roll up to the little village green. Sometimes we're a field in the middle of nowhere, and we play picturesque places. And all our caravans are old um, 1930s caravans that fit in with the whole kind of. Cotswold um, aesthetic, is that the right word? Um, and we play Gloucestershire, Oxfordshire and Wiltshire and, and that's it really, we're quite a local circus. But again you keep to the traditions, I understand there's about 40, 40, 45 of you touring this summer. That's right, yeah, we have about that many performers from all over the world, yes, they, these guys are from Ethiopia, we've got some Ukrainians <laughs> and um, yeah, pe Scottish people. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just a bit, bit nervous of Kessie. No, he's fine, he's fine. I've seen Michael Parkinson, I know what happens. Yeah, no, he, he's well behaved, yes. <laughs> he right? Oh, he likes oh, you, he likes you. That's good, you. that's oh, good. Yeah, so good tell me a little bit more about the sort of show that people are going to get to enjoy when they see you perform. Um, it's, it's a small tent, it's a little big top, it's not huge, um, so it's very intimate. And the beauty of the show is you feel very much part of the show. Um, because it's in a, in a small environment. We have a live band, a 10-piece band. The music is all specially written for the show. And basically, it's, it's just a great fun show. We all have fun performing it, and I think that kind of shows. And at the end of it, people just genuinely kind of feel that they are part of it. And they do join us in the And you're going to be working dance. throughout the area during the summer, aren't you? That's right, yeah, as I say, we do Oxfordshire, Gloucestershire and Wiltshire and we're in Lechlade this week. That's right, um, yeah. It's very exciting and later in the year we'll be playing Marlborough and Sirencester. Well, we put your details on the bottom of the screen so oh, people will be able to look you up and see where you are. Yes, and, uh, down there. <laughs> there we are. There's the and see what you're up to. Uh, it's great to see you guys and, and, I, and I love what you're doing and um, we're here in the, in the Wildlife Park which again loves to uh, look after animals and again you've got a couple of animals apart from Kes here. Yes, yeah, so we've we got some horses, we've got a uh, a riding act which again goes back to the the um the old school where you you stand on the back of a right. horse and baby juggles while standing in the back of the horse so yeah we've got horses a dog and a goose fantastic well looking forward to seeing the show tweety thank you very guys much. thank you very much indeed yeah. kes see you later ah, <laughs> bark, bark. down boy down bark, 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 bark. Right, well, we'll let those guys go and get ready for a spectacular performance coming up soon. Now, there'll be no Swindon show next week, but Alistair and I will be presenting the Summer Shopping Special. Yes, we'll be showing you the very best of fashion from Swindon Outlet Store and also from the Brunel Shopping Centre. And I'll also be having a very special interview again with AJ Live, who you may remember from a few weeks ago. And I'll be joined by the current <laughs> Miss Swindon Ella Good. <laughs> Trying to concentrate here. I, tell you, I, knew the, I knew it'd be up to Havoc. something. Anyway, We'd like to thank everyone for being a part of today's show, including Tweedy, of course, and the guys from Gifford Circus. Also to uh, Chris Green, uh, to Leslie Holdship, and making sure I've got everyone here, to Debbie Ryan, and everybody here at the Cotswold Wildlife Park and Gardens. Thank you very much indeed to you tuning in. Make sure you stay in touch with us. Uh, hashtag The Swindon Show on Twitter, Facebook, and email studio at theswindonshow.com. And I'm trying to keep going to the end. Thank you very much indeed. We'll leave you to the guys. Right, let's get them away. Let's <laughs> Take them away, go and watch them perform, should be a good one. See you next week. Performing now at Gifford Circus. Bye. Bye. All right, we're going to have some juggling here now. Oh, I've lost my hat. Thank you. Try and get it. But, oh, no, it's gone. Oh, there. Oh, oh. Aha. Oh, it's gone again. Oh, there it is. Oh. You. No. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's gone again. <laughs> oh, there it is. Ah. 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 Try again now, from the foot, up on the head. <laughs> Give me a drum roll, I'll pat your knees for a drum roll. From the foot, up on the head. Ah, no, can't be Oh, come on. Ah, do it, do it, go. From the foot, up on the head. Come on, there we go. Up, down, ow! Ooh! Ah, 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 shoot! You look at Don't move. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. Stop moving. No, oop, oop. Please, stop it. Right. Stop moving. Oh. Faster. 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 Up, 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 Hey! Thank you very much. Don't move now. Stop moving! 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 Stop